a natural question to ask is what's the contribution of a muscle to a task? A candidate answer is something called induced acceleration analysis, which I'm going to critique here, and I'll introduce the ideas first. Uh, many of the ideas uh, were given in a paper by George Chen in 2006, by a tutorial Art Kuo gave a month ago, and in my World Congress talk 12 years ago, although I didn't realize it at the time. So the big question is, given a muscle, whatever one you want, let's say it was strengthened, weakened, removed, how does that affect your ability to do a given task? For example, let's just say you remove the muscles of your right hand, how would that affect your ability to play the piano? And, and here's Leon Fleischer playing with his left hand. So uh, with, with compensation, uh, you can uh, do pretty well playing with just your left hand. So uh, the, the answer to the question, what happens if a muscle is strengthened or weakened or removed, how does it affect a task, depends on compensation. And that might be a, a key issue in trying to understand th this question. Uh, it, what you need to know is for a given physical plant, how will the body coordinate the muscles when the muscles are, are changed somehow? And you need either uh, real knowledge like you know what happens with lots of people when muscles are weakened or, or strengthened, or you need a model, a predictive model, and my claim is induced acceleration isn't that model. But let's try for it. Is there some uh, purely mechanical calculation or definition that gives meaningful answers to questions like the ones Anderson and Pandy asked in 2002, what are the contributions of muscles to uh, various forces? And I think the answer to the question is, no, there's no simple answer in general. Uh, there are some caveats. There's special kinds of systems uh, and special kinds of uh, situations where you can do this, but, but not in general. And that's just what I'll try to explain. So the candidate answer is uh, induced acceleration analysis. It makes the robotic uh, model of a, a body like we do mostly in biomechanics. It lumps the muscle mass with the body mass thinks of the muscles as four sources, which I think is not okay. Uh, the basic reasoning is that dynamics equations are always linear. Uh, this is maybe surprising to some people, so this is a clever aspect of induced acceleration analysis, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain now. So here's, here's the uh, idea, is if you apply forces to some uh, rigid object, let's just say in 2D, uh, we have the linear momentum equation and angular momentum equations. And even though this is a, a nonlinear problem in general as it progresses in time, uh, the surprising thing is that it's uh, linear at one instant in time. So the governing differ differential equations, although they're nonlinear differential equations, they're linear in some terms. So we take these equations, assume we know all of these angles, and we know all of these positions, then given those things, we can find these constants, C1, C2, C3. And they're not really constants, but they're constants at this time and say that the acceleration of any point we care about, say its x-component, depends linearly on the magnitudes of the forces. And it also depends on gravity and centripetal terms and so on. Uh, if we take a bunch of bodies and hinge them together, it still remains true that any given acceleration or any given constraint force is a linear combination of the applied forces uh, and, and it's also a linear combination of quadratic terms in the uh, angular velocities. Now we can think of this as a biomechanics problem uh, also, uh, but, but let's just say what the induced acceleration uh, concept is, is that uh, since this acceleration in this configuration is linear in these forces, we can say that the part of this acceleration which is induced by, say, this force, is this collection of terms, this collection of terms. So this is the, in, the, the, uh, the acceleration induced by force too. And in the biomechanics interpretation, uh, these links are, are, are uh, body parts and so on. And anything you care about is, anything you care about instantaneously, that is, is a linear combination of uh, muscle terms and, and, uh, and then other terms which we don't care about. Uh, and so this statement about this linear combination is a mathematically uh, correct uh, statement. There's a sum uh, and there's a contribution from each muscle to the sum. Uh, and the induced acceleration is the contribution of each muscle in that sum. What's the physical interpretation? 
is imagine a person is doing something and in the middle of doing it in some configuration at some time you suddenly zap one of their muscles and make the force in that muscle zero and the question is how does some acceleration of interest say the acceleration of the center of mass or constraint force of interest like the force of the ground on the foot uh, change and it's just this induced acceleration term or induced force term so the math is good. What's the problem with induced acceleration? Uh, there's a sequence of problems, which I'll explain in detail in a minute. Muscles are not force sources. Uh, the answer is extremely sensitive to model details, where the physical plant, the, 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 the human body, is not. Uh, and there's no accounting for short-term or long-term compensations, and there's poor correlation with energy accounting or muscle size. Uh, there's a good side to it, but, uh, but um, that's not what I'm going to talk about. So let's take a simple example, uh, force on a bicycle pedal. Uh, there's a problem with giving examples, and it goes like this. If you give people an example, if you don't give people an example, they don't understand. If you do, they think the example is the point. Uh, but I, I'd like you to try to transcend that and think, if this is a good concept, it should work for a simple example. So if, if, it does, if the concept doesn't work for a simple example, it's unless there's something peculiarly bad about the example that uh, you should think it's, it's, it speaks poorly for the whole concept. Okay, so here's this uh, bicycle model. We have a hip, a hip muscle, a thigh, a knee, a knee muscle, an ankle, an ankle muscle, and a pedal. Uh, the pedal and the foot we're thinking of as one thing. Uh, we're going to be talking about the location of this ankle joint on the foot and we're going to try to push uh, down on this crank. And we're going to imagine that this is a process which is occurring uh, uh, relatively slowly. So that the inertial terms uh, in the process is, uh, are uh, small. So that we have the slow pedaling, uh, the knee torque is zero, and the, the force is downwards in this configuration. And we're going to hold the ankle angle constant in this reference motion. So the properties of the model is the hip does all the work, the ankle does none, the knee also does none, and the hip torque and ankle torque are uh, not independent. They, uh, for the whole, for, in order to do this, con this uh, motion, there's a postural constraint that the ankle torque is proportional to the hip torque. So what does induced acceleration say? It says the hip makes positive or negative contribution depending on the exact location of the ankle. So how do you figure that out? Well, the way you can do the calculation is you turn off all other forces and you just turn on the hip force. And since it's linear in the hip force, turning the other ones off doesn't change the answer. If you just, this thing is just floating in space, you just turn on the hip. It pushes down on the knee, it pushes down on the ankle. Now think of this foot or foot and pedal as floating in space. If you push down back here, it tends to push this point up, which means it pulls up on the pedal. Whereas if the ankle joint is over here, it pushes down on the pedal, there's some uh, center of percussion-like point, say two-thirds of the way back, that if you push just to the left, the hip muscle causes a positive, a lifting contribution, and you push just to the right, it causes a downward contribution. So the contribution depends uh, just exactly on where the ankle is. The ankle makes the biggest con positive contribution to F in induced acceleration analysis. How do you figure that out? you turn off all the muscles, you suddenly turn on the ankle, and what you find out is that it pushes down on the pedal. And the magnitude of the hip contribution scales with the foot mass, which is a weird result. For example, it would say if a person wears a heavier shoe that the hip uh, contribution scales with the size of the shoe. So let's do the defects one at a time in more detail. Uh, the first one is maybe the hardest one for people to accept. Uh, so if you have trouble with this, uh, maybe just, just uh, skip it. But people think of uh, muscles as supplying force, but they just as much supply velocity. So really a muscle has some constitutive law, some relationship between velocity history, force history, length history, and the stimulation history. And there's some, they can think of the muscle as something which constrains these functions. Uh, given, say, three of these terms, you can, or well, velocity and length are not independent, but given uh, uh, two of these terms as functions of time, you can find the third. If uh, clamped, you can think of muscles supplying a force. On the other hand, if a muscle is free, it supplies a motion. It doesn't supply a force at all. And in active tasks, the muscle is in between. Uh, you know, in general, it applies 
some restriction on the relationship between force and velocity, which depends on the stimulation and stimulation history and so on. So if you want to ask the question, uh, is a muscle important, you can think, well, let's remove it. And if you think of a muscle as, say, a velocity source, the other extreme from force source, removing the muscle is like fusing the joint. So what would happen if you say, what's the importance of uh, this muscle or the hip muscle? Let's try fusing uh, the joint. Let's fuse the ankle joint. Well, if you fuse the ankle joint, you can pedal just fine. So the hip comes out important, like it is in reality. Induced acceleration analysis says if you set the ankle torque to zero, the hip does positive contribution, negative contribution, depends on the details. On the other hand, if you lock the hip and don't let it move, the way, as one way of removing the hip muscle is to set the velocity to zero, then you can't pedal very well. Well, at all. So, this other extreme view of thinking of the muscle as a velocity source gives the opposite, maybe a better answer. And I'm not arguing that a, mu a muscle should be think of, thought of as a velocity source and not a force source. I'm just saying the force source idealization is just as arbitrary as a velocity source idealization. Okay, extreme sensitivity to modeling details. Uh, here, I already pointed out that if we change the mass of the foot, it changes the answer hugely. Uh, in terms of the hip contribution, if you change the location of the ankle just slightly to the right or left of the center of percussion, it changes the hip contribution to pedaling from positive to negative. Um, and if the ankle is fused, uh, it, change, it, um, it makes a huge difference in the hip contribution. On the other hand, if you take a person and you make any of these changes, it makes a small contribution. So there's some uh, in terms of uh, what you uh, see and, what, and how they pedal. No accounting for compensation. Imagine that the ankle was weakened. Well, you could then change your posture so that you could get big forces at the pedal with your big hip muscles by uh, making the lever arm of the ankle less. And this could be something people could learn in time or, or, um, or maybe they'd compensate very quickly. Uh, there's no correlation with energy accounting. In fact, the hip is a huge muscle and it does most of the work in bicycle pedaling. And if you weakened it, it has a huge effect, and the ankle has not so much of an effect. You can pedal pretty well with a fused ankle or a boot. Induced acceleration says the opposite, it says the ankle muscle is the most important. So, uh, repeating, what's the problem with induced acceleration? It makes the assumption that muscles are force sources, which they really are not. They're, they're complicated things, and that complicated thing makes a difference. Uh, uh, the induced acceleration is extremely sensitive to modeling details, which the human body is not sensitive to. So it's, it's, it, it introduces a sensitivity which is mm. not physical. Uh, it doesn't account for compensations, which the body makes with, when muscles are strengthened or weakened. And it doesn't correlate with energy accounting or muscle size, which are both good indications of muscle function, at least especially for um, work-like tasks like pedaling. Okay, so we want to know what's the contribution of one muscle to a task, uh, and is, are, is, is, is my talk entirely negative? Well, basically the answer is yes, but I do think there are alternatives, uh, which are based on, on uh, you need a predictive model of coordination. So you want, you want a task, which is quantifiable, it could be work in bicycle pedaling or speed of walking. You need a detailed mechanical model, you need neurological constraints, and given those, you can do an optimization calculation which is optimize the performance given the constraints, then you can do that calculation again and again as you change the uh, strength or capacity or size of a given muscle. And you can calculate this function, the capacity to do something as a function of muscle strength. And this would tell you a lot about the role of a muscle in a task. It's a, it's a much more difficult calculation, and it assumes that optimization is a, uh, is a, is a predictive model for coordination. Whether it is or isn't, uh, if instead you just say, let's do a sequence of experiments on a person, make their muscle weaker and weaker, or stronger and stronger, and look at their ability to do something, uh, I think that will correlate, uh, in general, very little with uh, induced uh, force or acceleration analysis and might correlate with this better model. So uh, thank you for your time. That's my talk. I'll answer any questions if I can.